Hi and welcome back everybody to another reaction video where we try to learn something new and to spread history on YouTube. Okay, so today we have the channel called Future History. I already covered their channel on my channel with one video, but today we have the, the topic uh, of the Russo-Japanese War, uh, which is um, the first war in Asia where a European power lost to an Asian power. So I'm really interested how they're going to cover this topic because there's a lot to say about this one. Um, and yeah, let's just jump in, into the topic. If you want to um, be part of our community, just hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. Uh, if you want to continue the discussion about this topic or other historical topics, there's also a Discord service for our server for our community and the link is also in the description below. Uh, go check them out, the channel Future History. I think they put out great content and uh, go give them a view and a like and of course the original uh, video is also going to be in the description below. So yeah, let's go into the topic. If one day you're asked to name which war from history best encapsulates the crane kick scene from Karate Kid, I'd suggest you pick this war. Or really <laughs> talk to different people. These are some really weird conversations you're having. Hello and welcome to Feature History, featuring the Russo-Japanese War, named as such because, well, take a wild guess. As the first true conventional war of the 20th century, it had a lot to show the world about how a new war works. Though really, all anyone took away was that Russia is stupid. However, today, using my amazing video creation and writing skills, we can take a delve into the past and learn much more from this slightly interesting conflict. In the late 19th century, Japan had broken from its feudal past and rapidly modernized, outdoing many European nations. I made a video about this, yeah. you can just look at that. Still unproven, they sought to do as any other empire would, expand. The Tsarist Russia of the same... Uh, just a quick note about Japan. Yeah, the Perry Expedition, uh, it was 1853-54, uh, and it saw the rapid industrialization of, of Japan and the end of the Shogunate. Uh, it was a American expedition where uh, the American government sent in the Navy with the naval uh, diplomacy with big gun diplomacy and so on and they practically forced the Japanese to end up their uh, is is isolation that they had for I don't know 200 years or something like that uh, and uh, that led to a rapid industrialization as Japan was the first Asian country to start to industrialize heavily industri industrialized and with that with a rapid industrial growth, you need resources. And if you are Japan, which is an island country that doesn't have many natural resources, you need to expand to get more resources. And the nearest land to conquer is, of course, the lands of Korea and uh, China, like the, ne the neighboring territory. And, uh, yeah, and that's why you see the, 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 the expansion of Japan as early as uh, 1904, 19, uh, the early 20th century. Uh, what else? And, yeah, because, of course, Japan is a, uh, an island nation, they also need to improve their uh, fleet. So they pump also a lot of money, not only in, in the troops, so like uh, for land warfare, but also they pump in a lot of technology and money into their fleet. Era had entered under the reign of Nicholas II, soon to be subject to his infamously inept reign. The great power had built one of the largest empires, stretching from Eastern Europe to the more Eastern East Asia. Their modernization, however, wasn't great, and they began to find themselves sliding further into debt as national pride and unity dipped. However, with the construction of the Trans-Siberian yep. Railway, the road that would connect all of Russia, Nicholas dreamt of imperial expansion in the east, one that might just cross over with Japan. The 1890s yep. saw the Qing and Japan butting heads over who had exclusive... Just a quick note. A big problem for Russia was always, like, a big pro and con for Russia was always its size throughout history. 
So the pro, uh, the pros, you have a lot of land, a lot of resources. The cons is you need to defend all the borders with all the different countries and you need to be able to transport resources, goods, troops, uh, and so on. And uh, the Siberian, uh, Trans-Siberian Railroad road started to, to be constructed in uh, 1890 or 1891. And it actually finished uh, around 1916. So if we're here talking about 1904, 1905, the, rail war, the railroad wasn't even constructed till the end because it goes from Moscow to Vladivostok. And yeah, so the move, you can all already see how the movement of the troops from the European part, which, which is the most uh, economic viable part of Russia and with the most population and so on, and also uh, with most of its troops, it's already problematic because Japan is attacking on the complete other uh, uh, side of the country. Exclusive influence into Korea. The Qing challenged Japan and it just so happened Japan was happy to yep. show off, crushing them in the Sino-Japanese War. Yep. Japan had a field day, claiming their influence over Korea and taking Taiwan in the Laodong Peninsula. Germany, Russia and France stepped in to explain you can't just do that, forcing Japan to let go of the peninsula, much to its frustration. Yep. Japan's emperor, Meiji, realized Western powers were very intent on carving up the declining Middle Kingdom and sought to push Japan out of the picture. Japan would make friends True. in Britain for assistance. In 1897, Russia played their hand. Uh, yeah, so technically, Japan uh, won against the uh, uh, Chinese. Uh, they crippled their army and so on. And then the European powers just come over and say, hey, it's actually, we're going uh, to expand here. So yeah, the frustration was big in Japan and they connected with Great Britain. And Great Britain uh, had a lot of influence in modernizing uh, the the Japanese Navy in the future. Using the warm water port Arthur from the Qing. You see, Russia loves warm water ports, can't get enough of them. They also began building another railroad to connect to the really big railroad they were still building. You see, Russia also loves railroads. On the turn of the century, the Boxer Rebellion <laughs> like broke out trains. in China, and everyone worth their salt pitched in some troops to the Eight Nation Alliance that sought to put it down. Russia had a big army just set on their railroad. They really didn't want anyone breaking it. When the rebellion passed, Russia's troops returned home. No, they didn't. Wait, no, the exact opposite, actually. They sent more troops yeah. in. Japan wasn't Into a big fan of a lot of armed Russians Thank loitering where they looked to expand, and so asked if they could kindly piss off. Russia thought this was a joke, and confident Japan wouldn't do a thing, asked Japan to piss out of Korea instead. <laughs> the only thing pissing off, however, would be both members from the negotiation table. Nicholas was assured in victory if war came. This would be the triumph to drive his nation and naysayers into one proud country. Russia would win. It had three times the population, five times the military, and practically unlimited resources. Yes, it was on the complete opposite side of the country, yeah, as I said. but Russia would win because they were European. Yeah. Europeans don't lose. Japan declared war on the 8th of February 1904, several hours after they had attacked Port Arthur and crippled Russia's Pacific fleet. They also began to quickly usher their armies into Korea. The Russian troops hastily prepared trenches and barriers on the Yalu River. The outnumbering Japanese would channel their roots in Bushido, death before dishonor, no retreat, no surrender, to scare the Russians back. Once the Russians were behind the walls of Port Arthur, they could do nothing but wait as the stronghold was surrounded and besieged by the Japanese. The Tsar on the back foot had to find out how to reinforce his position. Land? Well, the railroad isn't finished. Sea? All the other fleets are in Europe. So they were going to do both of those. Reinforcements were- Oh nice, he's also going to mention the Baltic Fleet. I don't know how, he, uh, how detailed is go he's going to go into the Baltic Fleet, fleet but there's an interesting story how they needed to go around Africa and what they encountered. They even, uh, like here, approximately somewhere here, when uh, they exited the, the Baltic uh, Sea, they actually fired on a British ship because they thought it was a Japanese ship. So the British reacted with closing uh, uh, the Suez Canal uh, in Egypt, in today's Egypt, and so the Russians needed to go around Africa, which was a a hell of a, a, a trip. And they, they caught diseases, mutiny and everything. But yeah, uh, on that note, yeah, Russia, as with the land troops, they had a 
let's call it an, 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 an Asian force and an European force. The European force uh, was way bigger and so on. And uh, it was the same way with the fleet. And as the fleet was destroyed, the Pacific fleet was destroyed, they wanted to reinforce with the Baltic fleet and with European troops. But as I stated at the beginning, it's always a big problem for Russia to reinforce like different parts of, of their country, especially from one end to to the another. But ushered across the England and the railroad, railroad wasn't and the finished. untrained Baltic fleet was directed to the Pacific Ocean. Before the fleet had even exited the Baltic Sea, they fired on British ships they <laughs> thought were Japanese. <laughs> Japanese yeah. in the Baltic Sea. The British weren't having it and shut the Suez Canal to yeah. Russian ships, yeah. forcing the fleet yeah. to take one of the longest sea routes in the world. The Baltic fleet blundered its way across the African coast, managing to fire on themselves repeatedly, buying exotic pets that killed crew and purchasing a snake that wouldn't let the captain near the mast. The rail troops finally arrived in 1905, shortly after Port Arthur surrendered. Yeah, the Japanese began to strengthen their defences and went toe-to-toe -to -toe against the outnumbering Russians in the largest pre-World War land battle, the Battle of Mukden. Yet again, the Japanese, thanks to their sentiment for sacrifice, repelled the superior Russian force. The battered Baltic fleet finally arrived in the Straits of Tsushima in May and were quickly and decisively crushed by the smaller Japanese fleet. Back in St. Petersburg, the people were sick of war and more generally everything and staged a revolt. The only fleet the Tsar had left to send to war mutinied, spelling doom for any comeback. It was deemed the Imperial Army must be turned on the revolution, and yep. negotiations opened between the belligerents, concluding in the Treaty of Portsmouth on September 5, 1905. Russia would abandon its imperial ambitions in the area and recognize Japan's influence in the region. Uh, just a quick note, uh, the American president, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, was a big player in that th treaty. Handing over the lease to Port Arthur and parts of Sakhalin Island. The war was certainly a shock to the international community who had watched it closely. A European power had been brought to its knees by an Asian one. Yep. Russia an embarrassment <laughs> and Japan now the preeminent <laughs> Asian power. The people of Japan were not happy with such middling gains Did for you such see? sacrifice. However, the imperial court ignored them and used power for an Wait. embarrassment, and Japan, oh now the preeminent, God. watched it closely. A European power... Theodore Roosevelt, <laughs> with his mustache and his glasses and the American shirt. <laughs> nice. ...I had been brought to its knees by an Asian one. Russia, an embarrassment, and Japan, now the preeminent Asian power. The people of Japan were not happy with such middling gains for such sacrifice. However, the Imperial Court ignored them and used the war to pave their way to annexing Korea in 1910 and further expanding into Manchuria yep. and China down the road. The revolution in Russia was put down, but at the expense of Nicholas II being very publicly exposed as a moron. His people hated him, and his enemies in Germany and Austro-Hungaria felt confident in combating him, leading to his eventual deposure and assassination in the Second Revolution. The war set the scene for the world wars to follow and stood as a testament to the prospects of war in the early 20th century. But it's more enjoyable to just laugh at all the political cartoons that thought Russia would kick Japan's <laughs> ass. Nice. Thanks to the patrons and personal mentions to Anal Scrub, Steve Graham, Zed for Thrace Vega and Grandpa Hex. Nice. Yeah, I don't have any clever joke today. <laughs> nice. So yeah, the 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 Russo-Japanese War wasn't only a, a, a war. It was also a big statement to, to, to the world that Russia at that time had many weaknesses. Uh, some, after the war, some called it, uh, what is it called? Like the paper tiger, or it, there's a saying like that. And uh, it had a lot of consequences on... on uh, ordinary Russians and what they felt to, through uh, uh, towards the government and the Tsar. And, um, of course, that fueled also into the revolutionary kind of spirit that, that started to, to evolve inside of Russia. And as we saw, um, there were already revolts back then. And uh, we also, also need to take into account that the Russian uh, population like uh, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century got more and more educated and more and more connected with, with other nations and people from other nations so they started to see the cracks and and like the things that they thought that uh, was a failure from the tsar or the government or, or the army and so on so 
the Russo-Japanese war is maybe I I I think that it's not that much covered like in like a main mainstream topic and so on, but it definitely had a big influence in world history regarding the first European uh, nation that loses to a uh, Asian nation, uh, the start of the Japanese like uh, imperial ambitions. Uh, I mean, they started also before, but like expanding even more and also the 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 russian civilians or or the russian population that started to openly and more fervously is it a word word <laughs> that started to rebel against the tsar and the government but yeah i hope that you enjoyed it as i said if you want to uh, be part of our community just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos come out and uh yeah, there's also a Discord server if you want to join our Patreon community. The link is also in the description below. And yeah, until the next video, see ya!